Guys, we're burning way too many matches. What's up? This is Brendan with Evoke Bike. Today I want to talk about something that sounds obvious, but when you put yourself in these people's shoes for a Cat 4 scenario, not necessarily a question, it's easy to see how you might burn too many matches early in the race or the hard group ride, which will affect your performance later on. Sounds obvious, right? But when you get in the race, adrenaline's pumping, you get that like, just you're full of energy, you might be closing down gaps a little too hard. You might be chasing a few things uh, too often. You see the video about the guy talking about when to bridge to the break, to use that match, when not to. So this athlete that I've been coaching for maybe six or seven months, um, one thing we were working on is conserve, conserve, conserve. So don't ever be on the front. In her race, there are times where she'd be like, well, it would kind of go slow and I'd get on the front, I'd look around, I'm like, you, you ask yourself, why are you pedaling? Every day on a macro scale, why am I doing this workout? On a micro scale in your race, if you don't know why you're expending energy, you probably shouldn't. I am, should I call myself king of no coast? <laughs> Just because I preach about it so much. No coasting on endurance rides in a bike race, the more zone one you have, the better. That is literally how I won my national championship, master's national championship on the road because when I went back to that race, I was like, I'm doing as little work as possible to stay in the race. That, mean, that doesn't mean you don't do any work, but you have to be very strategic so that when I get to that last 45 to 50 second climb, I can actually beat the guys that I'm with and it worked. Conserve, conserve, conserve. So let me briefly read this to you. Um, we, what I want to talk about is think about how those last intervals feel. Say you go out and do a five by five. The fifth one is brutal, right? It's nowhere near as good as the first one. What if you could, now just put those at the end of a bike ride. You go ride for two hours and then you do intervals. Think about this as what if you could prolong the work in the first portion and then do the intervals. They're obviously gonna be better, right? This person said, I was so thrilled to be in the pack at the end of the race. I was actually with the podium winners the whole time and I don't even think they're stronger than me. I was going up and over the hills with no issues. I only put out the effort required as you told me. This means if a gap opens up, what a lot of new cyclists do is when you look at their power files, there's so many spikes. A lot of them are unnecessary because they see someone go and they're Brr! If you are closing a gap and you find yourself then hitting the brakes, you went too hard, right? If you're closing the gap and then hitting the brakes, that means you could have closed the gap with less and less watts and got there. Save a little match, save a little match, save a little match. Maybe I should say that 10 times. So she conserved energy. I never went to the front and I tried to meter my efforts to stay below threshold and as much zone one as I could. These things are coming along. Several girls told me how strong I was. What? Question mark, exclamation point. This has never happened before. How, how, how amazing does this person feel by us optimizing these little tiny things? This person's getting stronger, but we're doing things that are taking the tools in our tool belt and understanding how to use them. So it's not that you necessarily always have to increase the watts, you need to increase your execution. This should be, I'm gonna make a podcast on this. So take what you have. My biggest points here are, do not jam on the accelerator to close a gap. If someone is yelling, you know, don't lose that wheel or close the gap. It's like, dude, if you wanna close the gap faster and waste energy, come right around me, please do. Take that win for me. Close the gap calmly, breathe through your nose, pretend you're in yoga class, don't freak out, save that energy. Cause then when you get to the end, you're gonna crush it. And I had an athlete that we've been working on the scenario for understanding how to be successful in the sprint at the end of this group ride that is a fast group ride for him. He's now staying with the leaders. So it's like, okay, well, how do I have the energy to finish? And I said, okay, we gotta go back to conservation. Now, how can you stay with them as long as possible with doing as little work as possible while keeping the group happy with the amount of work you're putting out? And he went out with his girlfriend on a ride and he did a couple sprints. And I can't remember if he took a KOM, but he set a 50 second uh, lifetime power best. And 
I'm, I don't think he got the KOM, but he came close. And he said, I can't believe how strong I was after not doing all that work. And like the light switch kind of went off. Like he rode with his girlfriends, it was pretty easy. Two hours later, he has a crushing sprint. And I'm like, okay, dude, now do that in a bike race. I didn't start my timer, so hopefully that was 10 minutes or less. Hit, hit us up below. What little strategies have you done to take your fitness and apply it better to your racing? See you guys.